Hello, hobbits. Oh. Nice. I wanted to get on too. You should. You should just wave and join sometime. I should just sit there quiet, with like word bubbles. Just put them all in my head. Shut not down. You're so funny. Let me just come on. Shut not down. Shut not down. I would. I would always say in the back of my mind, we should do a regular interview with you guys about, you know, the nature of fantasy storytelling and the fantasy marketplace and how it fits into your business and how it has helped your business or, or hurt your business over the years, that's, whatever. That's revealing our secrets. I know. Ancient Chinese and, secrets. And our identities. You can't have that. Ancient Chinese secret, huh? You're funny. That's a note. Thank you. Uh, can we pop this out? Is this how you can pop it? this out? Yeah, yeah there you go. There it goes. Well, that should be a nice full-size robust chat room for us a to robust enjoy. Robust chat. Welcome to the Wondering.net Torn Tuesdays. Every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Now daylight savings time? It's a bit strange to have uh, your hour lost oh, or you're... gained. But you live in Arizona. You don't have to deal with this. You live in Arizona, you don't have to deal with the time change, as you know. Hello, my name is Clifford Broadway. You can follow me on quick on uh, on Twitter. <laughs> follow me on on the Twitter Twatter book as uh, QuickBeam2000. Um, I'm one of the senior staff writers and contributors to the One Ring.net, along with my excellent co-host and technical producer, Justin Sewell who has a, a Bofors hat, but he doesn't have a nickname. That's in, right. Anyways. Uh, 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 so, I, I, can't, I can't do a show without my hat. As I have taught you. I've yes. taught you well, you've young taught me. Padawan. You've taught me well. So, hello, you streamer 108875. I finally get to join a live event. Uh, how, like, speaking of live events, uh, yesterday was the big Hobbit live event. We were live in the theater. Oh, weren't we, uh, we we had people in all the theaters that we could get, um, and, and we got a lot of. Well, we're going to talk about everything that we saw. Twenty minutes of footage. Um, not only that, we got a new trailer. Trailer three uh, out. Uh, and trailer not, three point one. It depends. Wasn't there a two point one in there somewhere? I don't know. And, it was a slight variation to the second trailer, but. Uh, yes, we're at trailer three now, and new key art posters. New key art posters everywhere. Oh boy! We've got we've, the Denny's Hobbit menu oh just my started gosh. today. That too, Denny's menu started today. And and uh, and then of course the extended edition Blu-ray uh, was scheduled to be released today. And that's a story into itself. So we <laughs> the extended edition that only some of you have been able to get your hands on. I tell you, we, quite so a story. We have got a lot. To talk about, let, let's let's start out soft and small, <laughs> like tiny little hobbit feet. Like tiny little hobbit soft, feet. Soft, quiet little hobbit feet. We have feet. the first exclusive oh, you that, that we published today is the new 3D Desolation of Smaug glasses. These are glasses you wear in the theater. As you can see, they're hobbit branded in the bag. They've got the hobbit. Right there on the side. Oh, look, there's with... multiple color plastic. Now, last year when they did... And this is a sword. It's one of the dwarven swords. And it is very clearly um, one of the swords that we've seen already with one of the dwarves carrying it. Um, I'm going to take a closer look at that and see if we can determine what it is. Last year, what was it? The key? The shape? It, it was shaped was like key, a key. The yeah. key of Erebor. That yeah. was what it had on the side of those glasses. You know, and I never got a pair. And I would have bought a pair. We were at the event... Yes, yesterday. we were at the worldwide event. And fans started lining up six hours in advance to get in. Oh they boy. O they overbooked the theater. They had to turn away a few fans. Not many. Um, but Did they were... really overbook the theater? Yeah, because well, you I always looked, do that. As I looked around, I saw maybe one or three little empty seats. They could have fit a few more people, just a couple more people. Well, at the New York event, it was packed. <laughs> And the funny thing is, is that the New York event, they made the fans stand in line outdoors. In the cold. In the cold. And here in bright and sunny and warm Los Angeles, it was 88 degrees. It was a beautiful, bright, <laughs> sunny day. And they let it us was, all stand inside. And the we lobby. stayed inside. Ironically. In the theater. <laughs> <laughs> all one word. Okay. This is a picture of inside the theater. You can see the, land, the, the line. Kind of went in and out 
of the, the costumes that were on display. We had Thorin, Gandalf, and Bilbo uh, costumes on display. But that was weren't the only costumes there. Cosplayer oh. showed up in full force. He was at the front of the line. And he was given a gift of an extended edition Blu-ray. He, he got a Blu-ray. The Dwalin character. Yeah. He was great. Uh, these girls were handing out T-shirts to anybody that uh, wanted them. I personally want the Smaug shirt, not the Hobbit shirt, because uh, <laughs> those gray ones look cool. Uh, man, she th this was one of our winners on the OneRing.net. She won some tickets through our through the website. These folks brought uh, some wonderful little plushies. Um, there were some fans that drove all the way from Arizona. They sure did. Uh, a, whole a whole great family. family of them, yeah. And look, inside the theater, we were front row for Evangeline Lilly. Yes. It was, she was so endearing and so friendly. Uh, it was just amazing. Here is uh, Gandalf. Someone in Gandalf cosplay showed up, and this guy's like six foot nine or six foot. Like this, this guy made everybody feel like a hobbit, uh, and he was taking pictures with everybody. There's the real costume. Uh, you can see. I mean, it's just the the detail in the hat. Look at that brim. That brim is quite spectacular. Here's Thorin's. Thorin's costume was really fantastic. It was so fantastic. I mean, look at the detail on that. Uh, this was on display. It's Look, it's well lit. You can see that. Um, they had these posters on display. That was quite spectacular. They had two sets of these, these cardboard standees. And although I liked the, the first Hobbit movie with the green door mm -hmm. standees, I really like these things, except Bilbo looks like a plastic model, and we'll, we can talk about that later. What, of course, what do you mean with this? What, he looks like a wax figure, you mean? Oh, yeah. His poster looks like a wax figure. It's terrible. There is Gandalf staring at, at his, his own reflection. At his own Gandalf costume. <laughs> we got a little bit of Gollum going on. That's really very cool, actually. Yeah. And so we're... Uh, uh, this is pictures from inside the theaters. You can see that it was kind of intimidating, you know, for the actors to, to, to be standing or sitting uh, right in front of this huge screen. So there's Peter Jackson, lar literally larger than life, uh, in front of a wonderful Evangeline Lilly, who just had so many stories to tell. She, she again, so again, cool. she succeeds above all others that I've met at being the most warm and personable and friendly you're right that after. Gandalf looks like Cliff and we have no pictures of Cliff with Gandalf so there's something interesting there oh oh we see you can never get a picture of Clark Kent in the same picture with Superman can you so no you can't you cannot uh, and, lovely and then lovely, here's, here's lovely some uh, costumes from from New York uh, <laughs> these, these, these were wonderful people that that were waiting early in the morning in the cold you know, I noticed coming from New York Comic Con, there are a lot more dwarf cosplayers in New York than anything else. Like, there's something about New York that, that brings out the, co the the dwarves. Except here's an elf. She, that's wonderful. There were so many great Tauriel elves. Well, there's a great Thorin. There's a great Thorin. Look at the detail he did his armor and the fur. I that's think that's great. a she. You know, 90% uh, of the dwarf cosplayers I've met this year are all females. So there's there's something uh, something yes. really fun about that. Again, another pattern to be seen. And of course, Thorin's ultimate fan. Look at all the buttons. She's got Richard <laughs> freaking Armitage, <laughs> Armitage Army. Uh, well, she's definitely with the Armitage Army. Yeah. Uh, so the, she was quite amazing. Did you hear somebody uh, in the webcast announce his last name as Armitage? Armitage. Did you hear that? No. Somebody actually introduced Richard Armitage with that funny pronunciation of his last name. Like, I'm going to shop at Target Boutique, is what it sounded like. Um, Toriel's costume? I wish that was in L.A. Why did they put Toriel's costume in New York when she was in L.A.? That make, makes no sense. Ooh, look at that. That's Bard the Bowman's costume. It, he, That's great. He's got stubby legs. He looks like a dwarf. No, he doesn't. Yeah, maybe. You think that's a dwarf costume? Maybe. That looks like a, a bard's costume. But they, thankfully, they brought Evangeline Lilly out early. 
They brought her out to visit and say hello to she everyone. She kind of brought herself out. She did. She was totally in control, and she was the first person to say, "Okay, guys, are the Tauriel haters in the audience? Be honest with me." I know she be asked, honest with me. She asked everybody. She want, She asked everyone very specifically. Okay, who are you guys who are real Tolkien fans, and you're sort of sitting on the fence? And you're not sure what to think about this Tauriel character, and some people very meekly and mildly put their hands up. That was very interesting. She yeah. said, okay, let me talk to you. She wanted to address these individuals in the audience, the people who need convincing. She said, I'm the biggest Tolkien fan. I'm a, a, an, in a state of absolute adoration of Professor Tolkien's works. And she said, I have been rereading the Silmarillion. I haven't finished it just yet, but she's like, oh, my gosh, just the chance to play one of these immortal creatures, one of these elves, she knows her stuff. Yeah. She knows her Tolkien in and out. She, she was reading the Silmarillion she as was. she was flying to the set. And she was correcting everybody else's pronunciation on the right way to say Smaug, the right way to say Tariel, which has the same vowel sounds put together, A and U, to create that ow sound. Yeah, that was a little weird. No, she's great. She, she, she showed uh, book learnedness, and most of the actors don't have any book learning when it comes to the Tolkien books. Yeah. And I was really appreciative of that. I was very, very glad to hear her say that. 